Kathleen Zellner took to Twitter on Monday, December 17, 2018, to provide an update on Stephen Avery and her quest to see him exonerated of the murder of Teresa Halbach. Avery became the subject of Netflix series Making a Murderer in 2015, and its success led to a second season dropping this year. Should Making a Murderer Season 3 be renewed, it is more than likely Zellner and Avery would both feature, especially after the lawyer's latest update on her client's case. Zellner often provides regular updates regarding further developments and her hopes of seeing Avery released to her 636k Twitter followers. Avery was sentenced to life imprisonment for first-degree murder after the death of Halbach along with nephew Brendan Dassey. Avery and Dassey are in different jails serving their sentences. Making a murderer star Zellner has now taken to Twitter to claim she will be working with one of the world's leading DNA experts in her case to free Avery. Is Stephen Avery still in jail? Kathleen Zellner update. Zellner has conducted several tests in the hopes of exonerating her client image. Netflix, Zellner claimed in a recent series of tweets, We are pleased to announce that one of the world's leading DNA experts, Drive. Richard Selden at Richard Selden is willing to test the bones in the Manitowoc County gravel pit with new rapid DNA ID. If this testing is allowed, we believe the bones will be Ms. Halbox, this will prove the murder and mutilation occurred in the Manitowoc County gravel pit and the bones were planted in Mr. Avery's burn pit to frame him. Avery's lawyer also tweeted she had filed a motion asking the appellate court to remand the case. For this texting to take place, it didn't take long for making a murderer fans and critics to question Zellner's new claims. One Twitter user asked how the new DNA testing would work and how it differs to other kinds of testing, to which Zellner responded, it works rapidly and is more sensitive and has the ability to gather more data than traditional DNA testing. A second asked if the testing was a new technique, to which Zellner claimed the new testing received FBI approval from June 2018. What happened to making a murderer lawyers Jerry Buting and Dean Strang? Kathleen Zellner update Avery in 2007 image Netflix Avery remains incarcerated in Whippon Correctional Institution and will remain there to serve his life imprisonment sentence. However, Zellner claims the new DNA testing she aims to be used on bones from the case can be used to refute the state's case that the murder occurred in the garage and the burning occurred in the Burn Pit, Zellner also tweeted, This would be such a huge development that we would expect that a new trial could be granted outright, whether a new trial will be granted or not is still yet to be seen. WHO is Josh Redont, Kathleen Zellner update, Avery's lawyer tweeted her latest claims, image. Netflix, making a murderer season 3 is yet to be renewed by Netflix. If the documentary series were to receive a release date for another season, it's highly likely Avery and Zellner would both appear. Viewers could also expect to see an appearance by Dassey and his lawyer Stephen Drizzen and Laura Nyrider as they work to exonerate him while he remains in jail. Making a Murderer Seasons 1 and 2 are available to stream on Netflix. Do you think the police planted all of this evidence? That's where I think the evidence pointed. I really do. There are four categories of evidence that you think were set up, tampered with, whatever. Car, uh, electronics, key, and bones. To have a conspiracy, this has to involve a lot of people that have remained mum for 10 years. And that's a pretty elaborate cover up if that's what happened. It's a pretty elaborate undertaking to plant this evidence. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but you believe that they did this, why? Why are they so out to get Stephen Avery? Well, he's suing them for $36 million for, their, for his wrongful conviction, and it's not just the money. He's embarrassing them. So they had a lot against Stephen Avery, a lot of motive. Well, Ken says, and I, I think people would agree, DNA doesn't lie. It's either there or it's not. Uh, how do you think it got in the car, and how do you think it got on Teresa's key? Well, let's talk about the key for a minute. That was found, it was found on the sixth entry, or seventh entry, of the trailer. Um, it was not the first thorough search of Stephen Avery's bedroom. The first search, they were in there for two and a half hours.
in that little trailer. This is a small place. And, you know, they, they seized other items from his bedroom. Um, and yet they don't find this key. Now, if you look at that key, you can see there's milling marks. That's not her daily key. That's what a key looks like before you start using it all the time. It had none of her, that's a spare key. It had none of her DNA on it. And all those crevices where she supposedly was handling it for two years that she had the car, uh, only his DNA is found on it. And it's a very small amount of his DNA that their expert said was consistent with the amount of DNA you would get if you rubbed a toothbrush or some uh, personal item against Why it. Why would he have contact with the key at all? Well, exactly. He shouldn't have had contact with the key, and he didn't have contact with the key. And what's it doing in his bedroom? On the one hand, they want to try and make Stephen Avery into this criminal mastermind who's able to clean up this huge mess in his house, finding no DNA or blood anywhere. And yet, he's stupid enough to put the key in his bedroom? Makes no sense. What do you say to that? Well, spare key, first thing that Jerry Buting doesn't tell you is there's a blue fob that's attached to that as well. The other end of that, the lanyard, is locked in her car on the other end of Stephen Avery's property. Study after study has shown it. When, when more than one person handles an object like a doorknob, a light switch, or whatever, um, you, will, you will get a mixture of DNA on it. And somebody who who's, uses a key every single day, think about how many times you touch that thing. All the crevices in the key, on the handle of the key, it was swabbed all the way around. And they didn't find a bit of Teresa Hallbach's DNA on that key. You want to answer the question about the fob? Who cares about the fob? The key the is jury is cared about the fob. The jury convicted your client primarily, or at least partly, because the fob matched the lanyard. You never hear that in making a murder. You never you hear it through your through your argument. You stood up in closing argument in the rebuttal, and you said, "Well, maybe the key is planted. Who cares? We put it all aside, as if that doesn't matter." You, you know, you recognized that the that the key was was highly suspect. The discovery of the key was highly suspect.